Good morning. Who is Jeremiah sent to? We're starting the book of Jeremiah, and we're in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 8 this morning. Let's read it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1 is about God's call to Jeremiah, his prophet. And also, it's going to, as we carry on, we're going to see God's primary message to the kingdom of Judah. God in his universe created a place for Jeremiah. His purpose for Jeremiah is that he be a free-thinking individual, his own person. And yet his purpose, he also has a particular purpose. He has called Jeremiah to serve in the prophetic role. God has a controversy with the nations. He has a, a conflict with those who are busy setting up their own kingdoms in conflict with God's kingdom. Fallen human realities are actually more like bubbles. You know, bubbles don't last very long. Bubbles are transitory. And they're very dangerous if you're going to live inside of a bubble. But people are busy all over the place, creating their own sandcastles, their own bubbles, and trying to live in those bubbles as if that was reality, as if they had their own morality, their own right and wrong in their little bubbles. There aren't any such protected places. And, and if there were, they would become scenes of violence, of torture, of rape and evil. God speaks to us. He wants to draw us out of these, these catastrophic poison bubbles. He wants us to, to come to true unselfish humanity where we can have life and have it more abundantly. And so we're in very dangerous places, and God has come searching for you, for me. He's come searching for everyone. But this means a, a collision with the bubble dwellers, and Jeremiah didn't want that. Uh, we don't want that. Jeremiah is sent to the nations, and, and even we as fellow believers, we have a mission and a message for everybody who's in a bubble. Jeremiah doesn't want to confront the bubble blowers. He says, hey, God, you know, you, you made a mistake. I'm too young. God doesn't buy it. You know, you can never, God knows what he's doing. Uh, don't try to argue with him. If he's got a plan and you're in it, you, you need to say, yes, sir, and say, God, I may not understand it all, but I, but I trust you. And you know what? It's going to turn out wonderfully. Even if you get thrown in the bottom of a well or tortured like Jeremiah, you can count on it that God is on your side to deliver you. That's what he told Jeremiah. And that's what he tells you and me. God's love for people means he's going to call them out of their bubbles, and he'll actually use us to do it. And so it's a pretty tall order. But what a blessing, called to do this, this beautiful, special work for other people, many of whom are going to be hateful and uh, not glad to hear that their bubbles are wrong. Well, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we might, we might have second thoughts about being on this mission you've given to us. I'm sure Jeremiah had preferred he could do something else, but your plan was better. And I, we have to agree with you, Lord. Uh, your plan for me is better than my plan for me. So Lord, help me to submit to your plan for me and to trust you. And things will be okay. No matter how severe they seem to get, you will give the grace needed so that your work is accomplished. And then we have the privilege of having some tiny part in your work. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you that we could have even some tiny part in it for good for others. Bless us and help us, Lord. Give us, give us your insight about how to be your agents. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We can be God's agent wherever he sends us. Jeremiah was sent to the kings of Judah, and he really didn't get very good receptions, as we'll be seeing. But that's okay. That's okay. Ultimate reality is not in the hand of the king, the state, Pharaoh, the kings of Judah. It's not in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Egypt. Ultimate fate is in God's hands. We can trust him. God be with you today. Have a wonderful day uh, out in the kingdom, out in the world where God is invading and bringing his goodness, his unselfishness here to help us.